There are a lot of topics on the FAA Part 107 Remote Pilot, the Drone Pilot Test, and you need to know all of these topics because of the random way in which they are chosen for your individual test. This video right here, we're gonna cover uh, how you can decode METARs, weather reports, for that remote pilot test so that you don't miss any of these questions and your chances of passing that test are a lot higher. The more you understand about all of these topics, the better the chances of you passing that test. You can miss 18 out of the 60 questions, but they all start to add up if you're deficient in one knowledge area. So we're gonna cover weather reports here in this video. If you wanna see more tips about how to pass an FAA test so that the FAA doesn't trip you up, I have a video here on YouTube for the five FAA test taking tips. I also have another video for how to read the chart questions, which is another common topic that trips people up. And then you can also check out my full FAA Part 107 Remote Pilot Test Prep course uh, linked here in the description, and you can get 20% off of that course with the code TUBE20. Let's get into weather reports now. I'm not one to teach to the test. I firmly believe that you need to have an understanding of the material to succeed on the test and succeed as a drone pilot. However, this is one topic area where I do think that it's okay to teach to the test, and that's reading weather reports. METARs and TAFs, how to decode all of the raw data. Now, I've been flying manned aircraft for 25 years, and I haven't been forced to decode the raw data and read a weather report in probably 10 years, except for my biannual flight reviews, which are like check rides that we have to take every two years where the examiner asks you to decode a weather report. But other than that, there are so many great tools available to us now that decode all of this for us, like ForeFlight. Even the aviationweather.gov website gives you the weather reports, the METARs and the TAFs in a translated format so that you don't have to know all of the different symbols and abbreviations and decode all of those. If you're flying a drone near Las Vegas, you're not gonna go to aviationweather.gov fill out a TAF request for Vegas, and then decode all of that data. You're gonna use the decoded version or an app like Air Data or Drone Buddy that gives you a quick glance on what the weather is for drone flying. Or if you have a subscription to ForeFlight, that gives you all of the decoded data as well. Now you are probably going to see questions to interpret a METAR or a TAF on your remote pilot test. The chances are high. Now there is a chance you may see none at all. There's also a chance you may get five questions on this topic. All of the students who have taken my remote pilot course, they all email me after, let me know what score they got on the test. Some of them will say, hey, you can take out all of the weather report material in your course because I didn't get any weather report questions at all. And then the next person who emails me says, wow, I can't believe how many questions I got about weather reports. The nice thing about all of these types of questions is that, like I said earlier, you don't need to know all of the abbreviations. You don't need to know all of the symbols. You don't need to know how to decode both a METAR and a TAF because they are both formatted very similarly. So METARs and TAFs, one is the current weather report. One is the forecast weather report. How do you know which is which? Well, the F in TAF stands for forecast. So that means that the METAR must be the current weather report. Most of the questions on the remote pilot test are gonna deal with wind and clouds. The wind block has KT at the end, that stands for knots. Wind is the only thing where we're measuring a velocity in these weather reports, so when you see knots, that's what the wind is. The first three digits are the direction the wind is coming from, and then after that you have the speed in knots. Now the direction that the wind is coming from, in your studies, you've probably learned that there are two types of headings. There is true north, or a true heading, and then magnetic. So wind, when you're looking at wind, and this is one of the little gotchas, the FAA is gonna ask whether that wind uh, direction on that weather report is true or magnetic. This is a mnemonic that 
we learned decades ago when we were learning to fly, when you read it, it's true. Meaning that when you are looking at, when you are reading a weather report, you're looking at the text, it's true. That is a true heading, not a magnetic heading. Now that mnemonic was all before social media. I don't think we can all say that if you read it, it's true, it doesn't apply anymore. But when we're talking about FAA weather reports, if you're reading it, it's true. That is a true direction, not a magnetic direction. In addition to the wind, you're also going to have questions about the clouds. That's what these abbreviations are. There's a three letter abbreviation for the type of the cloud and then three numbers for the height of those clouds. And these heights are given in heights above ground level or AGL. They're not given in MSL because when we're flying, we care most about how much space do we have between the ground and the clouds. And so that's why these cloud heights are given in AGL. And that's what you need to remember for the test. One of the things you need to remember for the test about clouds is they are in AGL. The other thing you need to know is that they are given in hundreds of feet. So what you're going to do is you're going to add two zeros to that number. And that is how high above the ground that cloud layer is. When we're talking about a ceiling, we're talking about a layer of clouds that's so thick, you may not be able to get through it without losing sight of the ground. And that is either an overcast layer, which is completely solid, or a broken layer, BKN, where there might be some small gaps, but there's still enough to consider it a ceiling. So recapping the three things about the clouds, they are given in AGL altitudes, you add two zeros at the end of those to get how high above the ground it is. And a ceiling is either an overcast layer or a broken layer. The nice thing about only having to remember these few things, uh, what we just mentioned about the wind being true, and then all of the other factors about the clouds that we just talked about, only knowing those will allow you to use the process of elimination to come up with the correct answer, if that's all you know. Your answer choices for a question like this, they're gonna be something like 200 AGL, 200 MSL, or 2000 AGL. Now you know that you need to add two zeros at the end of these cloud heights, so that means that C is the only possible answer once you add those two zeros. You don't even need to look or consider the other answer choices. Same thing for a question about the wind. For a question like this, your answer choices are going to be something like 110 magnetic at 12 knots, 110 true at 12 knots, and 350 true at 12 knots. You just learned that wind is always in degrees true, and I don't see 350 anywhere in this block of text, so it's gotta be B. And just a few other things for some questions that you might see. You might see a question about a METAR showing RAB35. RA stands for rain. And you can reference this chart linked in the description if you wanna learn more about all of these abbreviations just to know them. But your answer choices are going to be something like rain began at 35 minutes past the hour, rain will begin in 35 minutes, and some other completely random option that will make no sense. The question says this is on a METAR. METARs only show current conditions. They're not a crystal ball that can see into the future. So this option is immediately disqualified. And your answer is rain began at 35 minutes past the hour. It is known information. Finally, one quick word about TAFs. I haven't received a lot of feedback about how many questions there are about reading TAFs on the drone pilot test. There aren't a lot of sample questions from the FAA out there either that have you decode a TAF, but I do wanna cover some important things about TAFs real quick in case you do see one because the FAA is always adding new questions to these tests. The first line of a TAF, it looks very much like a METAR, but remember, because it has the F, it's a forecast, a forecast period that is valid for either 24 or 30 hours. What is the weather going to do in that 24 or 30 hour period? That's what you're reading here. 
And those are the next lines. FM stands for from, meaning that at this time, these conditions will take effect. Those conditions will be present until the next from line, where you're going to have the next set of weather conditions. Or you may see tempo, which stands for temporary set of conditions, like a passing afternoon thunderstorm. At this time, these temporary conditions will be in effect. And when that temporary condition is over, it's going to revert back to the previous set of conditions. And then prob, P-R-O-B stands for probability, like here a 30% probability of thunderstorms with rain. So this is how you're gonna get through reading METARs and TAFs on your remote pilot test. You're not gonna miss any of these questions now. Again, I hate teaching to the test, but I think this is one of those topics that it's okay to do that because out in the real world, drone pilots are not looking at the raw data of a METAR or a TAF to find out the weather. There are so many other better ways to do that now. There might be times where you need to do this if you're in some kind of limited communications environment, or you might still just do it out of habit. Again, I've been flying manned aircraft for 25 years, so I can still look at that raw data and decode it in my brain in under a second. And so it is a little bit quicker for me, but for most practical purposes for drone pilots, you're not gonna know how to decode this data except for passing that remote pilot test. If you wanna see my full 315 question test bank, you can check that out. Again, that's linked in the video description. And you can also check out my full remote pilot test prep course linked in the description. You get 20% off of that course with the code tube20. Please let me know if you have any other questions about that remote pilot test, specifically the weather reports. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more great tips like this every week, and we'll see you in the next video.